All right, welcome to the video where we actually look at examples of parallel and perpendicular lines and and talk about how this might actually be calculated. In the last video, we looked at the picture and tried to gain some some insight into what's actually happening in terms of the patterns between parallel and perpendicular lines. We mentioned that parallel lines have equal slopes and perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals. So let's look at a couple of examples and then we'll get right to the algebra to see you know, how you might go about doing this for tougher problems. So if you were given a list of, of, of equations, right? Like y equals 2x plus 3. Here you're giving something in, sl in, in slope-intercept form, right? They gave you the slope and the intercept. So they might give you a list of equations like y equals um, 2x plus 7 or, or y equals 13 plus 2x and y equals negative 2x plus 3, and y equals negative 4 minus 2x, right? And then they can give you some more. What if they also gave you y equals 1 half x, or y equals negative 1 half x plus 2, and keep going one more, 2 minus 1 half x. So the, the goal is that without drawing all this stuff, you want to figure out which of these are parallel and perpendicular to this original line. Well, the idea is that you can look at just, or just look at the slopes of each of these things. Here in this one, the slope is, oh, let me use a different color. In this one, our slope is right here. The slope is 2. So it's the same as our original. That means that this has to be parallel to this one. I'll use the parallel symbol. Here, the order has been changed, but still, of course, this is 2. The slope is 2, so this is also parallel. Here the slope is, is negative, not positive. But it's not the negative reciprocal of 2, right? So this is neither positive, neither parallel nor perpendicular. Here, same idea, the slope is minus 2, which is neither equal to or the negative reciprocal of our original slope, where m equals 2. So it's neither, these are both neither parallel or perpendicular. Here, Right? This is the reciprocal of our slope. Instead of 2, it's 1 over 2. And if you're confused about reciprocals, just remember, you can tell something's a reciprocal to something else if you multiply them 2 times a half and you get 1. If you get 1 from multiplying, they're reciprocals. So here, um, right, this is the reciprocal, but it's not the negative reciprocal. It's the positive reciprocal. It's the same. It's still positive. So it's not parallel. It's not perpendicular. Right? And that's part of the idea. These things can't be parallel or perpendicular if the slopes are either not the equal to or the negative reciprocal of your original. Here, finally, we have a negative reciprocal of our original slope. So this is perpendicular to our original example. Here, in this example, um, again, we have minus 1 half for our slope. That's the negative reciprocal of 2. So it's perpendicular. And again, a negative reciprocal means you start with 2, it's a brighter color. You take the reciprocal of it, that's 1 half, and then you take the negative reciprocal, which is negative 1 half. So that means negative 1 half is the negative reciprocal of 2. If you'd start with a positive, I mean, start with a negative, excuse me, like let's say your original slope was y, for y equals negative 1 third x plus 2, to find the negative reciprocal, you would take negative 1 over 3 and First, I would take the reciprocal, that's negative 3 over 1, and then multiply by negative 1. In other words, write it as positive 3 over 1. And the order there doesn't matter. You could have multiplied it first and then taken the reciprocal. You'll still get the same thing, right? But the, the goal is don't forget to both flip it and flip the sign, take the opposite, to find a perpendicular line. So here, let's, let's finally use some algebra here to figure out what kind of a, how to deal with the kind of questions you might see. Let's say you're given a line. We'll call it line A. And they write it in standard form. Standard form is just, you know, some coefficient times x uh, minus or plus some coefficient times y equals some number. And that's standard form. Um, and then you'll be given a point. And these points can be anything. We'll use the point 5, 10. They'll ask you, okay, if you know that, that line A is written as this, um, give us a line that's parallel to this and passes through our point here 
and give us a line that's perpendicular to our original line and also passes through this point? This is the kind of question you might see. The first thing you're going to want to do is rewrite this probably, I think, in, in slope-intercept form because it's very easy to use that form um, when to, or to convert to that form and use it to solve and graph or even to manipulate it algebraically like, like we're going to do here. So you want to get it in the form of y equals mx plus b. That's, that's the slope-intercept form. So y is over here and it's, it has a negative sign next to it. I want to get rid of that. I'm going to rewrite my equation, but I'm also going to add 5y to both sides. That will make things easier for me, because now I'll have 10x, these are gone, they cancel out, they add to 0, equals 10 plus 5y. We can't really combine these. And I want to get it so it says something times x, and I already have 10x, plus or minus b. So here's my b value, I'm going to subtract it from both sides. And now I have 10x minus 10 equals 5y. But I don't want to solve this in terms of 5y. I want to know what y is. So we keep going. So 10x minus 10 equals 5y. 5 times y equals all of this here. So to solve for y, I'm going to divide both sides by 5. Or you can think of it as multiplying by a fifth. So on the right side here, 5y divided by y, 5's cancel out, because 5 divided by 5 is just 1. So we have y equals this. Now when you're dividing by 5, make sure you divide each part by 5. So it's 10x divided by 5, and that's 2x, minus 10 divided by 5, which is just 2. So finally, we have our y equals mx plus b form of our original equation. And now we're actually, you know, we're almost done because we have, we have our original equation and we can switch this around so it matches this exactly where y equals mx plus b. But I'm going to leave it like that and let's find a line that's parallel to it and also passes through this point right here. So how do we do that? Well, now I think what you might notice is that if you know the slope of the line, what's the slope? Well, the slope is right here. It's, it's the m value. So m equals 2. We know our new line, right, the parallel line, has to have a slope of 2, has to have an equal slope, and we know it passes through the point 5, 10. Now, if you look back in our last videos on, on this form right here, it's the point-slope form that's going to help because we're given a point and a slope. And the point-slope form, if you, it's, not, it's not thing you have to memorize. It's just... Um, the, a rewriting of the, of the slope formula in a general sense. You can go back and look at that if you want. But the point-slope formula says y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And the y and x1 are from this point right here. The other x and y are general points. So we can plug this in. And we can also plug in our slope. And then we're almost done for the parallel line. So m is 2. And we have x minus 5, that's our x1 value, equals y minus 10. That's our other, that's our y value. So we distribute this 2 to x and 5, and we get 2x minus 10. That equals y minus 10. I want to know what this is in, in terms of y equals mx plus b formula, format, and they'll usually ask for that slope-intercept format. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides. And what do we get? Well, these tens cancel out, and so do these. So y equals 2x plus 0, right? But, but we don't need to write that 0. So that's our parallel line to this one, and it will pass through the point 5, 10. Okay, so we'll clear this off. And now we have this equation of our line y equals 2x as our parallel line. And now we want to find a perpendicular line that goes to the point 5, 10. So what do we do? Okay. Well, we know, again, if our original slope was 2, which it was here in, in this equation, um, now the perpendicular line, let's write a different color, our perpendicular line will have to have a slope that's the negative reciprocal of 2. So that means our slope will be negative 1 half. And the point that it's going to be, that this line will be passing through is 5, 10. So what do we do? 
we're going to use again our point slope form to solve. So we know m times x minus x1 equals right y minus y1. And I'm just flipping the sides from before, same formula. So our slope is negative a half times x, it's a general x, we don't know it, minus x1, which is 5 right here. That equals y minus 10, this y value. If I distribute my negative 1 half, we get negative 1 half x. All right, I multiply it here. And then negative 1 half times negative 5, which is positive 5 halves. That equals y minus 10. But I want to I know what y equals, so I add 10 to both sides. So if I add 10 and add 10, I now have my equation, which I'll write over here. These tens cancel out, and y equals negative one half x plus what's ten in terms of halves? Well, how many halves are in ten? It's twenty, right? So I'm going to rewrite ten instead of adding ten. I'm going to add twenty over two, and halves are useful because I already have five halves. Twenty over two is ten, so I'm really adding ten. If I add twenty and five, I get twenty-five over two. So that's our equation for our perpendicular line. So let me, oops, let me just copy and paste these lines here so we can get a sense of what it might look like. See what's happening. So our original line is y equals 2x minus 2. So that means that that line, and we'll keep, well, I can't get the color consistent because you won't be able to see yellow, but I'll make this a red, right, a red line. So it passes through the y-intercept at negative 2, so maybe about here. And the slope is 2 over 1, um, so it's going to go up 2 over 1. But I'm going to magnify that a little bit so we can see it in terms of this grid right here. If the slope is 2 over 1 for this red line, to see it on this grid, I'm going to multiply it by, by 5 and get 10 over 5, right? It's going up 10 and over 5, and that's easier to see on this grid right here. So to go up 10 and over 5, I'm at negative 2. If I go up 10, I land at about 8. And I go over 5, it's about here. So this line, if I go backwards, it's going to land me 5 this way. And down 10 to about 12. This is our original line. Right? Oops, that didn't work out nicely. This is our original line. Okay, so now the next line is parallel to that, y equals 2x. So the only difference is, that means that y-intercept is 0, right, because we don't even see the y-intercept. It's parallel, it has the same exact slope, but it passes through 0, the y-intercept, and this point right here. And that's not a good drawing. Right there. Okay, so that line's parallel. And now let's draw a perpendicular line here. I'll use a darker blue for this. Here we have a slope of negative 1 half and a y-intercept of, of what? Well, 2 goes into 25 12 and a half times. And this is the point it's passing through right here. So let's look at our slope. It has to cross these other lines at a 90 degree angle. Right, so about here. Oops, let me shift that down a little bit. So right about right there. Even though my drawing is a little bit off, let me try to fix it so you can get a sense of what's happening. There we go. All right, that blue line is passing through the other point, 5, 10. It has a slope of negative 1 half, and it crosses the other two lines at a 90 degree angle. So this is all very difficult to draw. I mean, not with a computer software, but draw by freehand. So we really do a lot of this algebraically, but I wanted to give you a picture so you can get a sense of what's happening. All right, 